Nastasha, and welcome. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Don Beaton, and joining us today is a fast emerging fiddle player from Marguerite Cape Breton, Chrissy Crawley. And we're excited to hear all about Chrissy's adventures. Chrissy, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Don? I'm good. Thanks for joining us today. No problem. It's a bitter winter, but it's great. It's a little <laughs> chilly out there, but uh, nice and warm in here. Exactly. Toasty warm. Toasty warm here at CBU. We're here in Sydney, Cape Breton, talking to Chrissy, and uh, just wanted to chat about uh, kind of your year in review. You've had yeah. a really exciting year. It's been a little surreal. Part of me is it's almost a year now that I've had a new CD out, and it's been doing really well. I just actually realized that today that it's almost been a year, and uh, it got a Canadian Folk Music Award this year, which is great, and uh, hopefully some more to come. I am. Um, just sort of went in, rehearsed everything the night before, plowed through everything in the studio and called it last night's fun because that's literally what you hear is last night's fun. And I didn't know if everybody would appreciate that approach. It's a little different. It, I just wanted it to feel a little more live because everybody always says fiddlers are so fantastic live, but their CDs don't always reflect that. So that's what I was going for. And it actually worked for me. It's doing a heck of a lot better than the other records I did. So there you go, good work. <laughs> So tell me who was uh, also appearing on last night's fun. So we have Jason Roach, who actually plays the piano on the CD, but gave me my first uh, couple of fiddle lessons, which is a little different, having a piano player teach you fiddle. And then we have uh, Darren McMullen on everything. So we have guitar, banjo, mandolin, upright bass. I can't even remember. You'll, ha you'll have to buy the CD to find out. <laughs> and um, Rachel Davis and Colin Grant do some guest fiddle on it. And Kenneth McKenzie on pipes, who plays with the Beaton Sisters often <laughs> enough. Hope you don't mind. I snagged him for a day there. And then Keith Mullins on percussion, which was uh, a new move for me in the studio. I've never worked with a drummer, period. So I had him in and he did a little bit of everything. So we've been incorporating it into the live show a little bit. Every now and then we'll play as the five piece with Keith. Nice, that's mm -hmm. great. And you recorded that where? I recorded that at Lakewind, and then I did all my mixing at Salem Park Studio. So I tried to spread the wealth among Cape Breton. <laughs> Two great studios mm -hmm. here in Cape Breton. Exactly, that's because great. I'm so wealthy, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting the music industry in, yeah. in all the best ways. Um, so a lot of the guests that you had on that particular album, um, you've gotten together with them and kind of started a new project. Do you want to talk about uh, the yeah. new formation? So Rachel and Colin and I have been playing fiddle together for years and each of us used Darren and Jason in our separate shows. So we've always said it's a little funny when we're showcasing an event like the East Coast Music Awards, we're all back to back with the same rhythm section going up. And I guess we decided to just join forces finally and make a band out of it. So it's Rachel, Darren, myself, Colin and Jason. And we actually started as a promotional tour for Celtic Colors. And we went down to Maine and we had so much fun we decided to keep doing it. So we've been playing a couple years as that group, but we finally just got a name this year. It's Coig, which is Gaelic for five, and we're hoping to take the world by storm. We actually had our first gig in Cape Breton through Celtic Colors a year ago. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You were playing up in, in Ganesh? In Ganesh, yeah. Thanks for the gig, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we could be uh, part and parcel to the, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the group forming. Uh, certainly a lot of great musicians there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what's up and coming for Coig? What, uh, you're in studio currently for that. We are, and it's funny because Rachel and I just put out CDs, so you think we would give ourselves a little break, both financially and mentally, but no, Coig is going into the studio now. So we just finished recording at Lakewind, and now we have um, some mixing to do at Dave Gunning's, actually. We decided to work with him, and we're all going to sing on the record. Really? All five so, of you? All five of us. So that should be interesting. We haven't actually recorded the vocals yet. I'm one of those people that I sing in the car. I should be on that. Do you remember there used to be a show where they'd like put the secret camera in the mirror and show people singing? That's what I'm like. I, none of it makes sense. I don't know the words. So, And on top of that, we're going to do Gaelic singing. Fantastic. So it should be interesting. Rachel likes to write out the little, she'll write words like, oh, you, so we can go, ooh, like the, what do you call it, phonetics? 
Uh, I'll be doing sort of falsetto fake singing, hopefully. <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite the singer Rachel is, but I'll be doing some backup vocals. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that Jason Roach has a beautiful voice. He used to sing, actually, his uh, first gigs was with piano, and he wrote a song about Cape Breton and a song about Shetty Camp. Wow. He's actually a really good singer, so all of us will go in. And uh, Darren and Rachel, of course, are already known as singers in their, their own solo show, so... We'll see if power in numbers works for this one. So that might be uh, any five-piece harmonies on... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see yeah, what exactly. the finished product is. <laughs> Great stuff. So, um, and what's the plan for the summer 2014 with uh, yeah. yourself and Coeg? It's pretty much all about Coeg right now. It's always about Coeg. <laughs> um, Coeg is going to BC for a couple of weeks. We're going to do the Salmon Arm Festival and a couple of uh, little tours there. And then we go down to the States. We've been going down to Maine every year, and we do really well there. And one of the, um, it's all the news right now in Cape Breton, is that Sky Theatre, which has been running for a number of years now, has decided to close down and... Uh, the organizer, Phil McIntyre, is going to put all of his efforts into a festival. So we're going to do our last Sky Theatre tour, mm. which is, it's a little sad, but we're looking forward to doing Crossroads at the end of it, which is his new festival, and that's been going really, really well. It's actually modeled after Celtic Colors, a miniature Celtic Colors. It is. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, I think you'll have lots of fun down yeah, there. And Phil's yeah. been a really good supporter to, to certainly Celtic Colors mm -hmm. and many, many Cape Breton artists. Mm -hmm. As well as Sam and Arm, actually, there's been pretty much every year yeah. Sam and Arm has had a uh, Cape Breton contingent go out. And mm -hmm. uh, if you see, they'll have posters, all their past concert posters, mm -hmm. and we spent time going through and picking out all the Cape Breton or so. Oh, you guys did it as well, right? The Beans? We, we did it last yeah. year, yeah. It's so. beautiful. What a beautiful area of the world. Yeah, yeah. I actually, um, when I went to the Folk Music Awards in Calgary, I actually drove through Sam and Arm, really? but it was dark, but I kind of got an idea of, of what it would look like in the daylight, so I'm excited to see it by day, you know, and perform there, of course. Right on. Uh, so tell me what's kind of, uh, what's on the burner for uh, maybe 2014, 2015 even and overseas? Well, because Coeg will have a new CD out, we'll be uh, touring with that. And what we're really excited about is when we were at Celtic Colors um, in 13, uh, two of the delegates got married. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you know a little bit more to this story than I do, but two Austrian delegates, I guess, decided to tie the knot um, during one of the, uh, the showcases there. And Rachel and I played the fiddle for it. <laughs> and to us, you know, it's just helping somebody out in need, a couple getting married. But we ended up getting a tour of Austria from that. <laughs> so again, thank you, Don, for the gig. <laughs> so what, what was supposed to be just a little quick wedding ceremony in the uh, Hall of Clans at the Gala College turned into this Austrian tour. Um, Sprague Sessions already toured in Belgium, so we're, we're working with that agent now. So I guess it's Austria, Denmark, and Belgium. So it's quite, quite the, the three-month tour is coming from a little three-minute wedding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a three-month tour. Yeah, it's going to be really, really great. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't know each other before, you're, you'll certainly know each other <laughs> yeah. after that. I, uh, Rachel and I have pretty much bonded. We're the only girls in the group, right? So, But it maybe has progressed too much because I've been wearing her deodorant at gigs. She's been wearing my earrings and vice versa. We were saying, you know, we now have a shared hairbrush even. <laughs> so there you go. You're going to be genetically yeah. connected. Quite soon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Hazzy is the uh, the mm -hmm. the delegate that got mm -hmm. married, and yeah. he's uh, again another fabulous promoter, and has mm -hmm. really uh, done well for Cape Breton artists, including Madison Violet, um, mm -hmm. who've done well over there too. So, speaking of all of this great music, um, I'd love to have a sample and hear some tunes from you. Would you be up for? Definitely. I'll give you uh, some jigs and reels off the new CD. Great. Thanks so much, Chrissy. No problem. Can I go for it? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
up a copy of Chrissy's album, Last Night's Fun, at chrissycrawley.com, or check out iTunes for a digital copy as well. I'd like to take this time just to thank our sponsors that have been so gracious to help us produce this podcast. Imagine studying music on a beautiful island known for its deep roots in music and culture. Cape Breton University offers a music program like no other in Canada. With an emphasis on traditional and popular music, CBU's music major provides an exciting alternative to conservatory-style classical or jazz music programs. Their course offerings are unique. The music theory courses are aimed at the needs of contemporary musicians and help you understand the music you play. In the applied music courses, you get to study with teachers who have worked with names like the Bear McNeils, Ashley McIsaac, and Natalie McMaster. Through work placements, you will gain experience in the music field tailored to your interests, whether it's studio experience, promotion, tourism, or artist management. Through the optional business minor, you can add smart, real-world management skills to the creative talent you develop. The Ethnomusicology Focus lets you explore local traditions, popular song, as well as music and dance from cultures all over the world. Their issues-based courses will immerse you in the debates that shape music today. And again, thank you so much for the tunes, Chrissy. They were just no great. I'm no Don Beaton, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of what's coming up next, uh, I think the, the next biggest thing would be ECMA, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And um, and I know that um, I guess in January there was the press conference regarding showcasing mm -hmm. artists and and that. So do you want to speak to um, the news you got uh, mid January? Yeah. So we have a ECMA showcase for the Roots Room, and um, basically I know I know you're already aware of this, but a lot of the listeners and viewers might not be. The East Coast Music Awards is sort of just the final portion of that weekend. There's a whole conference before the awards show, mm -hmm. and there's showcasing and delegate meetings, delegates being the buyers or the festival organizers coming. And getting a showcase is a huge pat on the back for them. It sort of means you're one of the deserving artists to go in front of all these delegates. We think you're sellable enough, you know, <laughs> to perform in front of them. So, um, and it's really nice because I haven't done the Roots Room since I was about 17. Oh, wow. And it actually, I, I even get a little <laughs> sick just thinking about it, that I, I was showcasing that young. And, and you know, nobody, nobody enjoys listening back to their first records. It's the same for showcasing. Um, when I did that first one, one reviewer said she's like a little Marsha Brady. And I really don't want to be the Marsha Brady of Celtic fiddle playing, so I'm looking forward to doing the Roots Room again and showing how I've developed over the last uh, seven years. And uh, another showcase that we just got, which is really interesting, is called Two for the Show, where I have nine minutes to pitch myself in front of, you know, about 50 delegates. Um, I'm allowed to perform. I can do whatever I want. One year, a band made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for five no. minutes, so I don't cook. I can boil eggs, and that's really hard to do live, so I have no idea what I'm going to do yet, but it should be interesting. It's, it's sort of like going on a dating show for nine minutes and yeah. saying, I'm deserving of your love. <laughs> yeah. So you'll probably be one of those delegates, actually. I might be around. Yeah. I'm glad we in. had this 30 minutes beforehand. <laughs> I'll be there to show my support exactly. about that. Yeah. So is that just uh, as Chrissy Crowley, or is this as the COIG? This is as Chrissy Crowley. The, the hard thing about... Um, um, the five of us is that everybody's still performing solo and Rachel and Darren are actually going to be on tour together. Of all places, they're going to be at Dollywood oh, meeting wow. Dolly Parton and performing for um, her sort of theme park there. So they weren't able to attend ECMAs this year. And uh, but hopefully maybe next year Coeg will have a chance to get in on the action once we have a new record out. Yeah, you'll be eligible mm -hmm. with the uh, with the new album. Uh, speaking of which, I just wanted to get a sense of uh, of what the album itself will entail. So you spoke mm -hmm. about some of the the song element that will be there. What's the um, the feel and and I guess genre of the album? Will it be very traditional mm -hmm. or will it take on another feel? It's sort of in between. Um, so I always say we're not Slanchava, we're a little bit more like Biolac. Um, those are two great Celtic bands from Cape Breton that um, don't actually tour anymore. So I guess Koig is sort of sneaking in on that fun. <laughs> and 
we're sort of, um, I would say, if anything, we're more traditional than contemporary. But when you have five musicians, especially three fiddles, we're going to want to use that to our advantage. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of doing just straight melody through, there's some harmonies there. Um, everybody's writing their own tunes in the band. Um, lots of tunes from away. And then you have Jason and Darren, who both don't come from a Celtic background. Um, well, in Jay's case, he is Celtic, but he has a jazz degree. Mm -hmm. So they want to put their own flavor. And it, it was pretty funny when we were rehearsing. We rehearsed for two weeks before we recorded. Jason and Darren are like two sneaky little kids. They're going into back rooms and working on charts. And then they come back and their eyes are big. And they're saying, you know, we have something really good for this set. And you have no idea what they're going to come out with. And it's, um, it's also a different experience to just do the songs, period. I'm not a singer, but I'm, I also don't play with a lot of singers. So it's different to be arranging and trying to write fiddle parts for your song and you know being a fiddler I want to just you know be all over it because I'm used <laughs> to being the lead and it's it's hard to remind yourself to sit back because you might be singing in that section so it's, it's a new experience for a lot of us that's great mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking Koic performed over in Shetland mm -hmm. at the festival and uh, I know, uh, having just come back from Celtic Connections, that um, you know Davy Henderson was mm -hmm. paramount to that festival and has yeah. just recently passed away. But um, I don't know if you wanted to say anything about your experience over there. It was phenomenal. Davy is actually the first festival to ever hire Coig, and and as that group, so we were maybe a little nervous going over because it was our first time playing overseas and. Cape Breton fiddle players function very different than the Scotland fiddle players. Our, our bowing is different. The general feel is a little different. So I think we were a little nervous getting over there. But when we got there, I realized it might as well be Cape Breton. The hospitality is the same. The only thing is they have a different accent. That's it. The <laughs> lifestyle is completely the same. That, that very much island mindset. And Davy, actually, some of us actually stayed at Davy's house. They had us billeted <laughs> with different families. And we had an absolute blast there. And we loved Davy. The poor man was working so hard that year. I remember him saying to Darren, eat anything you want. And Darren was looking through the fridge and he was like, that's from two years ago. That's from <laughs> God knows when. <laughs> and Davy was just run ragged. And my favorite story about Davy is that the last night of the festival, we were having some tunes all together. And um, that we basically got kicked out of the festival club there. It was a, it was closing time. And Davy said, I'm going to open up the office for you guys. So we all went to the Shetland office. And poor Davy was so exhausted. He was just falling asleep in his chair like this. But every now and then he would wake up and start tapping his foot again. And then he would fall asleep. But he would not go to bed. He would not miss out on the tune. So, you know, it's, we're so sorry to lose him, but it's such a beautiful festival. I'm sure they'll continue the tradition. Davey will be looking down, happy as can be, that they're still opening the festival up in the late hours, you know? Yeah, it's a really special festival that's been mm -hmm. in, in existence for more than, I believe it's 35, more than 35 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what was kind of unbeknownst to Celtic Colors when it started was um, it's a very similar setup. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, um, it's stationed in different parts of the Shetland Islands mm -hmm. yeah. and everyone comes back and congregates to yeah. Festival Club. So I'm really glad that, that you've mm -hmm. gotten over there to experience it and, and certainly get to know Davey even better. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a quick question about your fiddle. I'm always curious about <laughs> the story, mm -hmm. if you what you know about your fiddle and how mm -hmm. old it is and its history and I thought I'd just ask you that. Fiddler to fiddler. <laughs> fiddler to fiddler, yeah. I, um, I come from a family of fiddle players. Uh, both my grandfathers played. So you would think I'd have a beautiful story like I played one of their fiddles, but I'm actually a cheater. I, uh, there's a man from Cape Breton that, play, that um, makes fiddles, Clay Carmichael, mm. and they're, I think they're absolutely beautiful. Um, they just work so well for certain fiddlers, and Rachel Davis and Colin Grant had them, and I was sort of eyeing them, and I was thinking, you know, it's, you know, they're pretty good. But I always had this mindset, the older the better. I kept, it's for some reason that was in my head that it had to be a 70-year-old fiddle to be any good. And then I went to Clay's, and I cried the day I got it. Mm. Um, I wasn't planning on buying one that day, but that's exactly what I did. I went right to the bank afterwards. <laughs> and I, I love it. Colin's actually just getting his second Clay Carmichael fiddle right now. Wow. 
So, and it's, it's, I'm really proud to say that my fiddle was actually made in Cape Breton and supposedly, maybe it was a selling trick, I'm not sure, but Clay says it's made from wood from Marguerite too, which is a nice touch. It's a little piece of home. Right on. Well, I'm sure it resonates beautifully mm -hmm. uh, being from Marguerite, so that's great. Well, I really appreciate you uh, coming in to talk to us today. And uh, Thanks for the interview. <laughs> I'm, I will be there at ECMA rooting, yeah. rooting for you. I'll make you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I do like peanut butter, so we, we'll there go you with go. that. <laughs> thanks so much, Chrissy. No problem. Thanks, Don, And thanks for everything, all the support from Celtic Colors over the years and the support to come. Before we go, we'd like to leave you with an interview we did recently with Dr. Winnie Chafe. Winnie is a... Celtic Colors performer, fiddle player, and instructor in both the Cape Breton Scottish style and classical side of things. Uh, she has many credits to her name, including honorary doctorates and international fiddling championships. But in this little clip, she's going to tell us about the fiddle she plays and where she first acquired it. Oh, my body. Yes, my dad. He was coming to the end of the period of time that they were in the war, and he was a sergeant. He took his men through all the places that were bombed, so they were not into the bombing, but rather cleaning up the mess. And as they got through these villages in Germany, the whole idea was that they would be looking for two things, prisoners and family members, especially children. And what happened was they went through this little village and when they came through, there was all kinds of bombings because see, everything was gone. The machines were gone, the bombers were gone, the Germans were in another place and everything was as dead as a doornail. Well, anyway, they're coming through this place called Cleve in Germany. And when they started through that village, they noticed that there was one building on the right that looked like it wasn't a house. It wasn't a church, but it was like a two, a large building, like two floors. And they kind of looked at that, you know, and as they're walking by, one of them said, Sergeant, look this way. And my father said, what? He said, look up on that mound, he said, where all that destruction was. And when they looked up, do you know what was there? A grand piano and the legs had been blown off it. So, Dad came over and he said, okay guys, have you got your little shovels? We have to do this very carefully. There could be a child in there, hiding, you see? So they started to shovel. The mound came down and down and down. And when it came down far enough, they lifted up the piano. And do you know what they found? My violin. It was in the piano with a ball. And at that time, they didn't have bandages like today more. They used to go, and if they were in a convent or something, they'd take all the sheets and they'd tear them up for the bandages for the, you know, for when they get hurt. Well, what Dad did, he took one of those sheets, cut it out, wrapped the violin in it, and put my mother's name in indelible ink on the outside. And I don't know how they closed it over, probably with tape. And he set it on a truck in Germany. It went through Germany, across the, the, into France, across there into, uh, on, the, on the ship going across to England. And from England, it was put on a, on a ship that came through to Halifax. Then it was put on a train and sent to Sydney Mines. I have the cloth here and I forgot to bring it out. That's all right. It's right there at my violin. And when that violin arrived at my mother's mail place, she went down and got the purse and brought it home, opened it up, the violin's in perfect condition. Three months on the way from Germany. You could not send a letter today that would reach you and be in good shape. When I was 12, on Christmas Day, I got that violin. And that's my, that's my love of my life for the rest of my life. <laughs>